Hey guys, it's Mathel here once again, and as the title of the video implies, cast on crit discharge is still pretty goddamn fun, but the single target compared to what you would expect out of this sort of build for its clear, is just a bit lacking. So I will go through in this video uh, to start out with these few double beyond sextanted map clips, which are completely insane, bit of normal gameplay, and then some uh, end game single target action, which as I said, is none too impressive considering you do have to be Cyclone, invest a fairly decent amount of currency into the gear, and then still be left with something that's uh, really not quite as good as a lot of other builds out there but this here is some uh, double beyonded sextanted or fully sextanted crypt action and this is probably the single most insane room i've ever entered it was full of monsters a harbinger with the double beyond and just non-stop beyond bosses and beyond mobs spawned it was completely crazy my computer just about locked up and froze but cast on crit discharge is pretty notorious for being able to take care of uh, more monsters the more th that are spawned so it just gets better with the amount of stuff you run into this is probably the second most insane room I've ever encountered this was in an arachnid nest though so shaped arachnid nest tier 13 full sextants double beyond once again got a nice harbinger proc there as well and non-stop action just going off uh, it is a bit of a question mark as to what's going to happen in the future with the vile pack changes maybe you won't be able to do stuff that crazy anymore but we'll have to wait and see and this here is now just going to be a bit of gameplay action uh, so this is just what it looks like to map with this character on some uh, tier 13 gorge which is a pretty smooth playstyle. Uh, Gorge is basically made for this sort of uh, map clear, for this sort of build, because you can very easily just clear with pure shield charge, as you see here, charging from pack to pack, proccing your discharges, because we pretty much have 100% crit chance on shield charge, and then cycloning whenever you feel like you really need to step up your single target, or just the uh, clear on a certain monster or two. And it ends up being a very smooth playstyle. It is fairly quick. Um, um, not sure if it's the quickest thing I've done, probably wouldn't be, but it is pretty damn quick for what it is. And then you do have that on hand single target whenever you feel like you need to get a bit more reliable procs and more reliable damage in against whatever tough stuff you're about to face. So it is fairly damn fast and fairly damn fun and you don't really run into any problems with this uh, type of build up until you start to hit the tier 16s basically. So you cruise through breaches, you cruise through the uh, actual mapping content as well as that all of the bosses up until you know tier 15. 15 or so, none of those are really a problem either. The single target for those is very decent, especially since they have a lower end of life, meaning you do shock them quite reliably with your discharge damage, and that does make them, of course, take more damage. So ultimately, these bosses, not really a problem at all, and it's a pretty strong build for everything up until tier 15, and uh, yeah, it just cleans up real nice. This is probably one of the most dangerous Chayula breaches I'd come across recently. It was very dense. It did have, um, I think the map had crit damage and uh, lightning damage, something like that. So everything there's just about going to one-shot me, especially since I have no Chaos Resist. But we still clean up pretty well, and you can be fairly safe with the pure shield charging uh, playstyle, keeping up Fortify, hopefully proccing your um, discharge and killing things before they even get a chance to look at you. And then swap into the old Cyclone action just to finish off Chiula there nice and quickly. I then did do a few beachheads just uh, for some good XP, and as you can imagine, looking at those um, sextanted beyonded maps, Beachhead shouldn't really be any harder for um, that sort of content. It's basically the same sort of thing. A lot of monsters spawning, just got to shield charge in every now and again, keep your fortify up. Otherwise, spin all over that shit. And yeah, we do clean up beachheads quite nicely. They were fairly fast, fairly safe, fairly reliable. And ultimately, the only other thing I really need to mention about mapping is we are reflect immune. So I did run a bunch of reflect uh, maps and none of that really matters because you don't take any reflect damage when you actually have all of your stuff up. So then we do get to the actual uh, single target, which isn't really too impressive. It was doable for all the Guardians and Shaper, but it just wasn't amazing considering what I would have expected out of this character for the uh, level of, well, stuff you need to acquire. It's not necessarily super expensive at the moment, at least uh, at this part of the league, but it is uh, stuff that's not going to be that easy to acquire 
especially at the uh, start of a leak, I'd say. And my other beef is that basically you do have to put yourself in quite a lot of danger being a fully cyclone, so you're a melee-based character, since um, you do need to be in there to proc your discharges and get the discharge damage going. Your only other alternative is to use Blade Flurry, which I do try, and it does come in handy for something like a Phoenix fight, but otherwise you are pure melee, pure cyclone, and that does put you in a lot of danger, and you don't really get enough reward for your single target for being in that danger and when I try and compare single target on this build to some other things I think about the previous Cosprey's build I did which was pure cold doesn't require as heavy of an investment because um, there's no special items you need like Vol's Protector that's five or six linked um, Vol's Devotion you don't really need a lot of uh, or the Enchant even as well you don't really need actual specific stuff you just grab a Cosprey's maybe two and uh, then slap some gear together and you should have a fairly solid Cosprey's character and I do believe that had better single target than this thing even though that thing's single target wasn't terribly impressive either so overall it wasn't great and then if I compare it to a character that I thought was actually really good for single target which was my Pathfinder uh, Molten Strike that thing can face tank just about all of this content without moving without really worrying and on top of that it does something like five times more damage on the single target so it just cleans up way quicker overall that just seemed to be a stronger build um, for just about everything but this was a lot more fun in its novelty factor of going around and popping off discharges all the time on everything. So it was very fun to play, very satisfying. Ultimately, not sure if it's too worth it if um, you've played Discharge before and if you're familiar with this sort of thing. It's more for the novelty factor in my opinion, though maybe I just have not built the greatest Discharge character. I am very open to that uh, interpretation of the results because uh, I just basically slapped together whatever I thought would work as an ascendant since that seemed most appealing to me. By all means you could have better options out there, you could have better setups out there and uh, maybe it, this just isn't the one for um, the end game especially. So then we do get into Shaper. I did try lots of different setups, so using Flame Surge, using two discharges, as well as that using Firestorm to proc uh, even more power charges because a lot of people seem to be fond of that idea. It didn't really change uh, much one way or the other. Firestorm, that was the uh, non-Firestorm example, and then this is the second phase of Shaper where I did use Firestorm. Basically, I couldn't really feel much of a difference between using Flame Surge in my uh, six link or firestorm to help get power charges going couldn't really feel too much of a difference in damage ultimately and then being cyclone is super uncomfortable on shape of fight because you really do have to pick the uh, exact times you can actually attack the shaper and it just gets a uh, pretty tough to actually squeeze your DPS in, you have to drop a lot of the balls, you have to avoid a lot of shit, and it just uh, isn't great for that, especially considering it's DPS. You do need a good chunk of time to be able to uh, get your damage in and get him killed. That said, did get him. Only died a few times total uh, to Guardians and Shaper, something like three deaths total. And I will go over the gear for you guys if you want to try and follow this or improve upon it on your own. So here's the character. It is at this point uh, level 91, Scion, waiting room, waiting room. And I do want to go over the MTX real quick in case you want to uh, copy this sort of setup. Colossus Sword, Subjugator Weapon Effect, Full Seeker set over here, and then the Scholar Cloak and Demon King Shield. And that's basically what we look like running a purple Herald of Ice. So the biggest challenge in trying to build this thing is getting an adequate amount of life. And that is uh, at this point 6.1 thousand. I'd say anything over 6k is pretty good for this. Anything under just doesn't feel good playing the um, true end game or the higher tier maps and all that. Because uh, you do run into a few cases where you get... Uh, hit by a lot of things at once or run a few uh, low crit procs and uh, you do eventually take some pretty big damage uh, being pure cyclone. So actually getting this amount of life wasn't super easy. I did have to get a lot of um, life nodes on the tree just about everywhere I could here, here, here. And then as well as that, I pretty much put life on every single jewel. So most of these jewels are three props with life, crit multi and damage. And uh, just about every single one of my jewels did give some life. And uh, that's pretty important and not going to be super easy to achieve um, 
earlier on in a league. So this is very late in the league. These aren't super expensive jewels. We're talking like 15 to 20 C for the most part, but they certainly won't be very available uh, the earlier a league is because they're not very easy to find, not very easy to um, acquire from people that actually need them and already have them. And then besides that, uh, like I mentioned, you pretty much need a Vol's Devotion, I think, to get uh, some of the good damage in. Currently, I think in Inya's Epiphany boots, the ones that uh, were introduced this league from the uh, council, are pretty damn good for the build, and I think they're almost 100% worth using in every scenario, so you do need to get yourself some of these. Cosprey's itself won't be super easy to get, especially early on in a league. They're fairly expensive. And then um, a six link doesn't really matter too much, I don't think, on the actual Vols Protector. So a five link is a, a decent base to start with. So that's uh, not super expensive, I think, because in the end, you're probably dropping either um, the Flame Surge or maybe the conch effect or something and uh, you shouldn't lose too much damage because quite a lot of your damage should be coming from the Cosprey's discharge setup itself and that's uh, the main bulk of your damage. Besides that you also have to fit in a Lycosidae so you don't have to actually worry about um, accuracy whatsoever and that means you're wearing one, two, three, four uniques, five uniques even, uh, just as absolute staples in your build and then you have to build around uh, those with your resists and life and it does get pretty damn tough and then 30% chance for discharge not to consume charges is uh, not going to be super easy to get and the only one that I could really get was a star conjure even though I didn't particularly want to wear a star conjure it is still a solid choice and uh, does give you you know a little bit of attack speed and crit and life but um I'd rather it on a helm that actually had resists so that I could have uh, built around the resists a bit easier. Because the other thing I tried to do was triple cap my wise oak resists and uh, I did manage to do that. I'm five resists uncapped but most of the time I do have endurance charges going so that's fine. And then yep we're triple capped on the wise oak meaning we do get the benefit to both our lightning and our fire damage which are our two main damages, but also I get the reduced damage to all of our damage, meaning uh, it's even more reflect proof. And overall with the Scion Ascendancy here of Elementalist, 50% reduced with Yugul over here, 25% reduced um, with the Wise Oak, 10% reduced. Overall, I do become actually uh, reflect immune. So I don't take any reflect damage whatsoever. Uh, with all of my shit up, as well as that fortify. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. Um, don't take any reflect damage, so that does make it pretty damn comfortable to run minus max reflect maps, reflect maps in general, or just reflect monsters uh, from essence and all that sort of shit. Something you may notice uh, is I am running Intuitive Leap over here, which lets you basically just skip a few nodes going over here, and then lets you grab a fourth endurance charge, which is a fairly decent little damage boost. So it's uh, pretty worth grabbing, but it's not like you know, end of the world. If you can't get one, you just have to travel up a bit and a bit down and um, have a different jewel there for damage purposes otherwise. So your passive true just be a little bit more stressed that way. And then uh, elemental equilibrium. So we do get that up 100% of the time, basically, since our damage with um, the cyclone itself is always going to be cold damage and only cold damage. That does mean you can't have lightning or fire anywhere on your jewelry or anything. Otherwise, it will ruin the elemental equilibrium. And then um, as well as that, I do have Herald of Ice and whatever happening for Blade Vortex. That helps keep rotationing it as well. Overall, every single time you proc your discharge, you should have a weakness to both fire and lightning. And that's part of the reason I didn't want to run Firestorm for a while because um, I felt Firestorm could uh, keep your fire elemental equilibrium stacking for actual, you know, resists instead of uh, resetting. But overall, I don't think it matters too much. It should still almost always have the procs happening uh, off of your cyclone to then get negative resists uh, towards fire and lightning. But I didn't really notice too much of a difference running Firestorm, sorry, over here. Uh, running Firestorm for the power charges because that's the main purpose of doing it so that you constantly get ticked up to six power charges and then constantly discharge uh, six power charges with your discharge in these Cosprey's and your discharge in the other setup. But uh, I didn't really feel it was that beneficial. I've played around with using Flame Surge quite a lot and also just two pure discharge setups. 
Couldn't really tell you what was better. I think Flame Surge felt best to me to rotate between these two and then this over here. But I don't know, man. I, it just, I couldn't really figure out a uh, conclusive best uh, based off of the tests I ran of various bosses and all that. They all seemed pretty damn good. And this seemed like it had the best edge, but I'm not too sure. So with basically the intricacies and mechanics out of the way, I'll just go over what kind of setups I ran. Uh, in the actual Cosprey's Malice itself, it had Discharge, Controlled Destruction, and then a lot of the time I was running Crit Damage uh, just for mapping and all that, and then I'd only put in Conk Effect for pure single target. But you can actually map with Conk Effect, it's not that bad, and uh, it certainly helps you bridge the gap for more DPS if you really need it for the higher content. The actual chest itself, uh, Cyclone, and then crit strikes and cast on crit are basically your staples so that you get really reliable procs for your cosprees. Beyond that, uh, discharge, and then uh, I'm running conk effect over here and flame surge. And like I said, I played around with um, just pure flame surge, played around with just pure discharge, but couldn't really decide. So I just, uh, for the most part, left it like this. The shield charge setup, when you're actually charging around, you can also proc with your uh, cosprees cast on crit. So it's shield charge crit strikes, faster attacks, and fortify support. Uh, down here I have my blade vortex setup, which helps you know get your power charges going a little bit better as well. So every uh, 10 seconds or so, I'd stop and hit blade vortex once. As well as that, it's attached to arcane surge. So we have arcane surge, faster casting, increased duration, last eight and a half seconds, you know, just cast it every now and again in between a few shield charges and whatnot. And it does help keep up power charges, especially with Inya's Epiphany, as well as that Arcane Surge. So I really like this setup over here. And then um, up here, just various bullshit. We do have Vile Haste, Increased Duration, an Ice Golem and a Herald of Ice. And uh, over here is Summon Flame Golem, Blasphemy and Warlord's Mark. So overall, you did pretty much have to run Warlords for Mana and uh, Life Leech. I really wanted to get a second curse, and you probably can if you replace one of your rings for uh, Dodri's and then run Assassin's Mark, but I just couldn't with my current gear balancing, and uh, it seemed a bit too hard to pull off. So overall, my mana was just Warlord's Mark and Herald of Ice. Herald of Ice doesn't really do too much in the setup, it gives you a few extra shatters every now and again, but for the most part, you're not really going to be doing too much Herald of Ice and uh, cold damage, especially thanks to Elemental Equilibrium. There's just not much else I could really reserve my mana with and uh, have a comfortable amount left over. So that's what I did. And then lastly, I will of course link you guys the path of building and all that and uh, show you just quickly what the damage look like. So our main setup discharge with um, the Cyclone Flame Surge Discharge, 220k average, you can proc at most two of those in your chest, but it of course relies on having all six power charges and all four endurance charges up, and then we hit a maximum of about 200k. Uh, the discharge in our actual cosprees was hitting for also about 200k. Have a max of four of those procs though per second. And once again, that is limited by how fast you can refill your uh, power charges and your endurance charges, which a lot of the time is always going to be up. But some of the times you do see you run out and that's when your damage starts to stutter a bit. But uh, you can play around with the path of building yourself. Have a look at all of the uh, tree and the damage and all that. And uh, yeah, up to you guys how you want to incorporate Cosprey's into your own discharge builds. Maybe Scion is not the best for you. I like Scion specifically because uh, it gives you a lot of extra passives. So you have a lot of flexibility on your passive tree and you can get a lot of the goodies that uh, Cast on Crit Discharge really wants from all over the passive tree without feeling super stressed on points. And then of course, do get some nice uh, reflect protection from Elementalist and a bit of extra crit from Assassin. Basically, it was a fun character. Uh, I'm not sure I'd really play it again if I didn't have to, because uh, I've done a lot of discharge at this point and I don't really feel it was that superior to anything. It was just a, a different type of um, explosion to what you're used to from other characters. So it is a pretty big novelty in that sense. So yeah, I had fun, and uh, that's about it for this one, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video, the wrap-up, and all that, and I will see you next time.